as a general rule, if, if cases are easy, it's pattern recognition. You know, if, uh, if you've broken your leg and you come to an uh, emergency department, that diagnosis is generally pretty easy. In more difficult cases, uh, it's detective work. So you look at clues, you construct ideas about what might have happened, uh, and, and you work through a number of possibilities. And when you start with little experience, it's more detective work, and the more knowledge and experience that you get, uh, the more it becomes pattern recognition. Um, and broadly, that's, that's how it's done. There are some other things that can help. I mean, certain sort of algorithms to follow through, you know, a patient presents with hoarseness or a difficulty swallowing. You can often follow through a, a little kind of pathway to lead you to possible diagnoses. But whatever diagnosis you come up with, you've got to then test it and you've got to, to consider alternatives. Uh, and the biggest mistake that we make in medicine is that we come to a diagnosis that seems to fit the facts and we stop. Whereas in fact what we should really discipline ourselves to do is to always think of those three possible things. You know, the, the obvious diagnosis, which is often the one that kind of pops into your mind, uh, the less obvious diagnosis, and then the diagnosis you don't want to miss. Agreed? I, I, I agree absolutely with that. I think there's, uh, there's the, uh, uh, when you approach a patient, it's important to establish the facts. Uh, what's the story? What are the findings on physical examination? What are the findings on the very simple bedside tests? And I think it's important to establish those facts for a couple of reasons. The first is that unless you speak to the patient and allow them to say what they want to say, they're not going to trust you. And quite rightly, they're not going to trust you. Now, a lot of what they say in terms of the diagnostic part is actually not that helpful, but you don't know which bits are going to be helpful or unhelpful until you've had that conversation. So that's really important. Once you've got the facts, you can, and actually as you go along, of course, you can do this in real time, though the more medical student or junior doctor will need to establish the facts and then think about it afterwards. Once you've got the facts, you can then reduce the story to its bare essentials. What are the really key bits of data that I'm going to need to explain? So the demographics are really important. Yeah. Man, woman, age, do they have diabetes? Uh, have they had cancer in the past? Those things are really important. Then what are the really key elements of the story? Now, obvious, sometimes they're really obvious. Six months history of breathlessness, now really disabling breathless at rest. That would be a key fact. Or perhaps it's more vague. I feel tired. I just don't quite feel myself. That's a bit vague. Physical examination, what are the key facts? For example, it may be you found aortic regurgitation that's new. That's a key fact with a few splinters in the hands. Those are really key facts. They need explanation. It's a lump, maybe. Maybe the key fact is a negative absence of findings on physical examination. The patient is well. They haven't lost weight. So sometimes it's a negative as opposed to a positive. Usually it's a positive. You then synthesise the story. This is actually where dialogue is important. When you have to present a case to a colleague, we're all... Uh, storytellers, story listeners, but we like to have a story uh, that is brief and has a bit of excitement in it. A uh, 38 year old man, been on holiday to Africa, comes back with fever and a lump. That's a story, and you're immediately thinking, Africa, I wonder what they were doing in Africa. Were they selling arms? Were they a tourist? Etc., etc. Et so, it, uh, but the act of, of just reducing that story to its bare essentials is also important. And then as David said, and I absolutely agree with this, you need to come up with a differential diagnosis. And I think this three-pronged attack, that which is most likely, that which is second most likely. And then we often say that which we don't want to miss, the translation of the most dangerous diagnosis. It may be unlikely, but it's the most dangerous diagnosis. And you must always do that.